Honorable, Honorable Mrs. Abike Mrs. Dabiri, Mrs. Dabiri Arua. Arua. Please a round of applause as loud as you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just like Tammy, please. Thank you for the honor. Thank you. And just like Tammy, I'm like, is that me? Thank you very much, Multimedia, for a beautiful. And I'm asking the MC, what am I wearing? What? What am I wearing? Okay. You are wearing. Uh, so I'm wearing Nigerian. <laughs> so you are Amichi. Pastor is who? Um, Buari. What about Tammy? Uh, Lagos. No rebound. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's appreciate our wonderful MC. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, Mary, the miracle baby, has graduated. And um, she was on my scholarship all through the years. I saw her through. And she's on her own now. She's graduated on our youth corps, I think. And she's coping with life. Are you married, MC? Because the next stage for her is husband. Say it in the microphone. I, that's why I came back. <laughs> Ma, you will not believe it. I've been seven years married <laughs> with two children. Don't mind that I look like a. Uh, uh, yeah, please, Ma. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Center, for inviting me for what I think is a very, very important topic. It's always tough agreeing to come to some of these events because you never know your program. I could probably be, I've had to travel somewhere, but I, I'm glad that I could be here. And let us clap for Temi for a beautiful presentation. And I'll be using you as an example of um, uh, positive jackpying. You know, jackpot, that term, I think jackpot should not be in our lexicon. I think it should be in the dictionary. Because it's now Jackpot. You know, in the 70s, it was um, Andrew. You remember Andrew checking out? Gen Z. Where are the Gen Z's here? I'm sure you don't know Andrew. But go, I think it should be somewhere. Now there's everything online. Andrew was on television checking out. Hey, I'm Andrew. I'm tired of no lie, no water, no good roads. I'm checking out. But the sad thing is, it's still happening today. Those things are still there. Those problems are still there. In those days, um, my husband was telling me this morning that, remember, in those days, they used to say, Mufe Yadanu. <laughs> and in those days, they used to say, Jand was the UK. Oh, Mufe Yanki, which was America. We don't use those slangs anymore. So it's always been there. You can't stop migration, whether it is legal or illegal whether it is good or bad. It's going to happen. We're all going to move from one place to the other. And we've heard Tebi tell us that you must really know your purpose in life and why are you moving? Where are you moving to? So I will look at it from the point of view of the good, the bad, and the ugly. In my job as chairman of diaspora, as also when I was in parliament, honestly, I saw a lot of things that actually make me very, very, very depressed. And you see people that have gone through so much pain. And the idea is really is that they didn't have to. And like Temi said, a whole lot of times, honestly speaking, I know it's tough, but it's not greener out there. It's worse than you can ever imagine. It's really terrible if you're not doing it properly and in the right way. So even the Chinese in the 19th century had a lot of immigration issues that they had to actually put a law on stopping people from going out of China. They actually had to enact a law. But look at China today. They turned the issue of Chinese diaspora into positivity for China. China is one of those countries that we try to uh, copy what they did with their diaspora. The same thing with India. So let's look at it from various angles. I'll start with the bad and the ugly. So we end on the good, so that we'll all live on a very happy note. Um, as I speak with you, 8,737 Nigerian doctors are practicing in the UK. 
and we don't have doctors, enough doctors in Nigeria. We're not anywhere in the World Health Organization recommendation. In um, 2020 alone, in just one year, 862 doctors migrated to the UK. I don't even want to talk about Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia actually came to Nigeria to take our doctors away. And if I was in my 30s, or I just graduated, and I'm, I don't have job satisfaction, and if you have that opportunity, you will go, right? Definitely you will go. Then in June alone, 353, 353 doctors left Nigeria to the UK. Should that worry us? Yes. Because it reminds me of the many years ago in China when the people were living in droves. It should worry us because our brightest and our best are leaving us. But can I tell you something? And I think as Temi himself knows and has said, when Nigerians leave the shores of these countries, they excel. We're simply the best anywhere in the world, and I think we should appreciate ourselves for that. If there's the biggest thing we have as a nation, it is our human capital. The best doctors in the world are Nigerians. In America, 70% of association of black doctors are Nigerians. And they are not just anyhow doctors, they're excelling. I don't know whether you know about Dr. Lutoye, who gave birth to a baby twice. He was a product of University of Ife. He, this woman was pregnant, they brought out the uterus from her womb. Dr. Lutoye and his team operated on her, put her back in the womb, and then she gave birth maybe six months later. It's never done in the history of the world. And there are so many like that. We have a publication that we had to do. We're looking for maybe 600 Nigerians when we turn 60. We couldn't stop. It shows, you know, our greatest assets are human capital. There's something in us as Nigerians. You know, that swag, that confidence, that you know what? I know go grill, I have to excel, just like Timmy has done, whether he jackpot twice or thrice or four times. You know? So it's always there. And again, I'll also mention this. There's also something that I've realized. For those Gen Zs, jack buying out, some t maybe this time in terms of education, you want a better education. Oh, your education system is bad here. Yeah, you must go abroad. I know ASU is on strike. I know it's, it's frustrating. Seven years, you don't know whether you graduate. It's frustrating. You now go abroad. Then you go to just any institution. Can I tell you something is sad, but you're going to come back not better than you left. There are schools set up for Nigerian students because of this class that must go abroad. There's the one we went to, it was a porter cabin in the middle of a market in a neighboring country. We went there and honestly, I was shedding tears. I happened to know one of the students, she mentioned that, I, used to, so I called the mother, I said, have you seen the school where your child is? She said, no. Look, I'll advise you to take that child to maybe just a private university in Nigeria. It could be any of the, um, I don't know whether Covenant has a university. Any of those universities are better than some institutions we send our students to in the name of you have to jack back to a school abroad. So number one is you must know where you're going to and where you're going to study. Forget about what you see online. There's another case we're dealing with now. Our students have done four years, but the institution is not accredited. They said it was accredited to India. They are coming back. They can't do youth call. They will not do youth service. In fact, they don't have a certificate. So what, I've been, what we're trying to do with NUC and Ministry of Education is put all these names online, let people know that, look, there are many of them now. They can't do anything. They went to an accredited institution. Ukraine. You remember we brought back uh, over two, almost 2,000 from Ukraine, a lot of them medical students. I'm sorry to say it breaks my heart, but when they came back here, some of them have gone to institutions here to continue their education. Some schools offer them free, or rather subsidize the fees. Is that how you start again? Or you don't come in? If you are part of year four or something, some of those schools, you can't even do year one here. And that is the dilemma. Because even some of those institutions, 
You know, they are just set up because they know we are coming and we're going to pay a lot of money, a lot of dollars, and they're taking our money, and we don't even know what our children are doing there. So, you know, our situation is bad, but it's not as bad as sometimes we go on social media to say we are so bad. Things must be done. Our country must be fixed, but we should not keep losing and destroying our younger ones who are doing these things out of ignorance. So that is a very important point that I hope that my young um, audience here will take into consideration. Even if you are going like Temi, do your due diligence. Know where you are going to. Know the institutions that you are going to study in. So we have people living in droves. Human trafficking. Agents are making money because you must jackpot. I receive people at the airport all the time. I have some of my staff here. We received how many from Lebanon? Hundreds from Lebanon. One of them held my legs at the airport and said, Auntie Abike, mommy, even if you're selling Guguru under the bridge, I'd rather do that than express what I've gone through. There's a lady, she was told she was going to be a school teacher, but she turned out to be made a prostitute. And then you are there, you can't even leave. She was sleeping with both the husband and the wife. We brought her back to Nigeria. President Buhari sent us to Libya. We went inside the Libya detention centers. It's one of the most emotional things I've seen in my life. I saw Nigerians, young men and women, crammed up like sardines in a room. Again, when we, we brought back almost 10,000. But guess what? They are still going. Till tomorrow, I'm still getting, please help us. My, don't go through agents or traffickers or through the desert. Rule number one, travel regularly. You know, one of the girls, I will never forget her. When we got into that detention center, she spoke Yoruba to me because if they know what she's saying, she's in trouble. She, they had stepped with her. She was pregnant. And um, the guy knew we were coming, and he poked something inside her, and she was bleeding as she was speaking to me. And she touched her uh, part and showed me blood. And she said, when you leave here, we're dead. You slept with me, they choked something in me, now I've forcefully aborted, I'm in pain. But we brought them back. And we told the whole world, we've received people, don't go irregularly, don't go... Somebody takes your passport and says you are going to make money, you're going to be as rich as Temi, you're going to build a house, you're going to buy houses. It's a lie. So that is number one. Please, my dear brothers and sisters, or let me say my dear children, don't let anybody tell you such lies. So if you're going to go abroad, go regularly. I know, somebody, somebody sent me a message when I said I'm getting ready for my talk. He said, eh, what are you going to say? Just tell them Nigeria is a terrible country, everybody must go. Don't listen to such people. And that is the reality. You know? So if you must travel, it's important you go regularly, safely. There's something we're doing now, and I hope you can key into that. We're working with some of the EU nations, what we call um, match program. In other words, there are programs where they will tell you, look, we are looking for these vacancies, and we have a lot of Nigerians keen into that, and some of them are going. There's nothing wrong in going abroad if that is your destiny, but please go properly. So that is the bad part of the issue of jackpying, uh, issue of migrating and living in a bad way. Um, we have several cases, even in Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, um, Oman, in fact, what we've done in Lebanon is that no more work visas. So if you're going to Lebanon and say you're going to work, you don't get it anymore. So we've had less cases. Oh man, people are always calling. Again, we've been able to deal with that, you know. You're, you're going and then we had a 14-year-old um, a girl that I just brought back from um, Dubai who was sent there by parents to go and work. The girl jumped from some high-rise building, went to the mission, she's back home. In Ghana, we went for a program, and I saw a 12-year-old Nigerian girl whose parents took her to Jakpa, that from Ghana, she's going to get to Europe. I, you know, that was so touching that you don't even wait for any procedure. Just come back home, pay her ticket. You received her, right? She's back with her family. So those things are really very depressing. I really shouldn't be happening. 
No matter how bad the situation is, we don't need to put ourselves in those circumstances. There's a guy we brought back from Libya. He said to me, he sold everything he had, 10 million naira. 10 million naira, then you, you said you're going to Europe. He's back home with nothing and has to start again. One of the guys, again, we brought back, started working with MTN, got recharged cars, started selling recharge cars. He's built a house, he sent his children to school, and he's doing fine. So the reality is, like Temi said, really you must know where you're going and what you're doing. So we must discourage irregular migration. We must discourage you, say you must go anyhow, anyhow. That has to stop. And I hope that your center will help in propagating this message at every point in time because we're losing a lot of people. Those we brought back are those who were lucky. Many have died. That is the reality. And it's a very, very sad reality. And like I said, that is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And part of the ugly is when you do go to these countries, please, my brothers and sisters, my children, we need to behave properly. You can't go to another man's country and behave badly and then you're calling on us to come and save you. We will get involved and do all we can. If you do not commit a crime, trust us, we're there for you. But if you do commit that crime, it's difficult. There's a problem in Dubai now. Everybody's going to Dubai to work. Be careful. It's getting tough. Dubai has now stopped a lot of Nigerians from certain work because, I'm sorry to say, we did a lot of things wrong. In Dubai, I'm sorry to say, Nigerians introduced kidnapping. Nigerians introduced cultism. You had to call us, we had a bit and say, can you define cultism? Because we don't understand it. It's not in our laws. How do we deal with it? So you find Nigerians who are supposed to be in Dubai that decided to start doing cult wars. So right there in a the public booth, they started killing themselves. And when they arrested them, they said, oh, he's a member of cult A. He came to my territory in cult B. It's not right. And we can't keep defending that. And some people will tell me, oh, they are Nigerians. No, we can't. So let's tell ourselves the home truth. When you go to these countries, behave yourself. Because you know what? Those guys are staining you that will be going properly to do your job. So don't let the bad spoil the good. And the good thing is, those bad are just 1% of 100%. But it's important that we talk about it, let them know we do not tolerate it, and don't let the bad spoil the good. Now I'll come to the good, which, like I said, Tammy Popola represents. Again, another a round of applause for you. And the good is that, yes, you can migrate regularly, legally, and all that. If you don't live regularly and legally, there will be no diaspora commission. <laughs> So the idea is that even when you do go, and he said it too, we, there, let's have that connection between you and your home country. So when you do migrate, it's important that you, and then before you go, Temi has said it, understand the laws of those countries. There are diaspora organizations and groups that you can talk to. We can give you as much information as you want. Even before you go, if you come to us, we'll guide you. And then we're trying to work with some missions where we have issues and do like um, the do's and don'ts. Frequently ask questions. We're working with the consular department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs so that we can give you more information. So before you go to these countries, ask questions. What happens in country A is different in country B. And then sometimes there's culture shock. You know, what will, something is just happening now. Some guy went to a particular country, I won't mention the country, he's a top civil servant. He saw some young girls, they were celebrating, and he went to grab her. She's just 16 years old. His passport has been seized. He's going to be charged for holding an underage. Here in Nigeria, I guess you guys, you know, accept such. They don't in those places. So he's begging, he's pleading, but we hope that he, they will understand that, well, he was just celebrating. There's a woman in America who went to, who was a nanny legally, and she was um, taking care of a young baby. Her case was very pathetic. You know how our mothers used to, if you do not want to eat, they will put you under their arms and say, what, what, my Roy? You know, the poor granny was rowing the child, and the child died. She, she died. Now she's in prison, charged with manslaughter. 
You know, it was difficult to explain that, that we do that here. My mother did that too. If you don't want to eat, I'm a shake, whatever. So you must understand the cultures and um, do's and don'ts and what happens in those countries. We try to intervene, but is the law? A child has died, and she was a nanny to, Nigeri to a Nigerian family in the U.S. So there are many cases like that where you just have to know the laws. So if you are part of the good, that you've been able to go abroad, you've succeeded. Now, some criticize me sometimes when I say, uh, celebrate Nigerians doing well abroad. They'll say, eh, you're always celebrating. Look at you. If they were in Nigeria, would they have made it? Uh -huh. Anthony Joshua, should be if he was in Nigeria, uh, your sports people would not even recognize him. Uh -huh. This one, if you are, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, they are Nigerians. They are there. They are excelling. They are doing well. They are making, and they are proudly Nigerian. They say it. So we celebrate them and we let the world know that that is who we are. Hardworking, determined, energetic. That is who we are. And the most important thing is for them to have a connection with their home country and that we're succeeding and we're achieving. So the, good, the thing is that no matter where you are, and Timmy, you mentioned it, you need that relationship. And you need to have that connection. So there are a lot of people who have jackpot, who are now saying, who are now, you know, elderly, and they want to come back home. But the question is, what home do you want to come back to? What role have you also played? So some are beginning to tap into some things, and a lot of them are beginning to invest in Nigeria. And you know, tell me, some, some are leaving, but some are coming in. And that is the truth. There's an 80-something-year-old man who is now going around every hospital to give his free service to patients. There's a doctor who now gives free cardiothoracic um, surgery to children. So there are many things happening. There are medical missions. There is a Nigerian who just came back not too long ago and was able to give scholarships to 100 children. So many, a lot of things are happening. So the key thing is, yes, you've gone, you've jackpot. What is your connection to your home country? Whichever way, and we've heard from my brother, home will always be home. Home will always be home. But then, having a lot of youth want to leave, and I think I saw a lot of hands up. For those of you at the back, if you, have, if you want to, who want to leave Nigeria today? Let me see your hands. If you want to leave Nigeria today, if you had the opportunity. <laughs> okay, stand up. I want to see your faces. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Do we say half of the whole? Or a quarter of the whole? Did I see my staff of NITCOM wanting to jack my? <laughs> you know what? You can, but go properly. But then it, it tells us something that we need to um, work at the leadership of our country. Government must play its own role, which is to provide the basic things, infrastructure, I mean, electricity. So we all want 24 hour electricity supply. We want, all want good roads. We all want a perfect system, break bureaucratic bottlenecks and all that. So government, I'm not going to shy away from that. I'm, in, I'm not a politician, but I'm in politics. I belong to the political class. And you all should to take an interest in what happens in your country. Elections are coming now. I hope you all have your PVCs. Vote for whoever you think will change your country. China was in our situation, like I said, many years back. But they've changed their narrative through good leadership. We have to change our narrative through good leadership in Nigeria. And the thing is, it is in your hands, actually. Not in the hands of the politicians. It is in your hands to decide who will take us to, you know, give us the right kind of leadership. And I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to say that make sure that you go out there and vote for somebody that will deliver. Somebody that will, we are at a tipping point. 
It can't be business as usual. We just have to ensure that we take Nigeria to where it truly belongs, the top of the mountain. Whatever it takes, we all have to do it. And it has to be participatory democracy. And, and, I, and people tell me followership has a problem. I know. Leadership, I believe that if you fix leadership, the followers will get in line. Nigerians we can be difficult, but we're also very easy people. Nigerians are not asking for too much. My son did a program in Benway State. He traveled by road, and I was worried for him, but he just I better go. He went by road, and he got to Benway, wanted to buy mangoes. And he said he wanted mangoes of um, 2,000 naira. And the woman kept packing, packing, packing. Ah! So he said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. It's enough. Take the 2,000 naira. That's all that woman needed to survive. So Nigerians are not asking for too much. The basic things of life. So it's important that the political class must do the right things. And guess how they can do the right things? By you demanding the best of your leaders and of yourselves. You know, we are, we are laid back. And I'm talking to the youth. You just sit back and say, they've done it. No, not anymore. You need to get involved. When I left, I said, I'm not contesting again. A younger person has taken over. You all can do it. And for the rich guys, tell me, all of you here, don't sit back and say, it's, them. it's all of us. If Nigeria does not prosper, you all cannot prosper. And we cannot make it happen. So we're close to elections. Well, I want my party to win, but I'm not campaigning. I'm just saying, vote for, get involved. Don't sit in your homes and be sipping tea. The big men will travel during elections. They don't stay around, though. They will go. But for all of you younger ones, you know, your future is here. Even if you go abroad, you are still coming back home. Let us get involved in our programs. Let us get involved in whatever we do. For us in Diaspora Commission, before you jack back, come and seek advice. Admin at nidcom.gov.ng. And uh, just, we, we, we've been advising people. And parents come to us and say, thank you, madam. Thank you for, we will guide you. We will guide you. And then, you know, we get inundated by, oh, help us do this, help us do that. We are not an NGO. Maybe we get more NGOs to get involved. We'll do what we have to do. But most importantly, my brothers and sisters, we have to get our leadership right in Nigeria. If the leadership falls in place, the followership will fall in place. We have to lead by example. We all must participate. We all must work together. Nigerians at home and Nigerians in the diaspora to build a Nigeria of our dream. We can't continue like this. The world must not leave Nigeria behind. We are the brightest and the best. And we must take our place in the Committee of Nations. And I add one key thing, discipline. Discipline is missing in a lot of our actions. We went to which country? Um, Cote d'Ivoire. Just a whistle by the policeman, you better stay in line. But here in Lagos, you face one way, and you'll be abusing me that I'm going in my right way. So, and then for the younger generation, please, 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 there's a lot of things on social media, but come to the real world. Be part of the real world. Combine both social media and the real world, and let's all you know, work together to build the country of our dreams. And finally, it doesn't matter where I come from. Let's look for the best. It doesn't matter my religion. I'm a Muslim. I'm a practicing Muslim. I'm an Elijah. Two times over. I go for my Umrah every year, but you don't see it. I'm sure some of you are shocked if I tell you I'm a Muslim. Practicing. You know? But it doesn't change anything about my relationship with any other person. That is who I am. But religion should not define me. That I'm a woman should not define me. That I'm Yoruba should not define me. We need to bring out our brightest and our best. So I challenge all of you to ensure that that happens in 2023. Thank you for inviting me. But wait, oh, like Temi, I will not live without singing my own song. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. My helper, oh, my helper. My helper, oh, my helper. There 
There is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. May the Lord help every one of us and may he help every one of us to achieve our destiny in life. Wherever your destiny is, whether it is in Nigeria, whether it is abroad, wherever it is, may the almighty God allow every one of us, every one of you in particular, our younger generation, to achieve your destiny. God bless you all. Thank you very much.